Have you ever wondered what it feels like to hear God? You may have convinced yourself that you're not among the special ones God speaks to, or perhaps you think that people who easily hear God have a special gift. Today God is using this video as a sign to speak to you and tell you what your heart yearns for. In this video, we will show you how God is always talking to you, but you may not always be paying attention to Him. God wants to communicate with you because He loves you and He has a plan and a purpose for your life. You need His guidance and wisdom to bring you into a blessed and fulfilled life. We will also be praying for you. So please watch until the end and open your heart to receive the blessing of this prayer. Remember to comment the word Amen after you say this prayer. One of the most common things believers say is, I really want to hear when God communicates with me. I want to know how to be guided by the Spirit of God. And this is sad because in trying to hear God, many well-meaning believers have fallen prey to satanic influence. Remember that the Bible tells us that even the devil can disguise himself as an angel of light to deceive God's children. In 2 Corinthians 11.14 it says, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. So since Satan can appear as an angel of light, the believer must be careful to know how to distinguish between God's communication and satanic communication. That is what we are going to cover in this video. It's an exciting journey because you are going to realize that all this time you've been worrying for nothing. Why? Because God has been speaking to you. Friends, understanding that God continuously communicates with us forms the foundation of our reasoning and spiritual journey. He may speak to us through various means, such as vivid dreams, third parties or relationships, sudden bursts of creativity, a persistent urge in a particular direction or issue, or even a distinct thought or mental image. These signs can be subtle or profound, but they always carry a message that benefits us in some way. Communication from God can take on various forms, from a simple association that represents something unseen to an unmistakable influence on our thoughts. It can even manifest as an obstructed course of action or the sound of singers in musical instruments. I've experienced this many times. I could be listening to music and then my spirit begins to receive clear instructions or feel a pull towards a direction that God wants me to go. Sometimes I could receive clarity about something I had been considering for a while. God can communicate any way He desires. The blessings of the Lord upon our lives, no matter the form they take, are meant for our benefit. Similarly, His communications, no matter the form they take, are meant to benefit us. Just as Isaiah 48 17 tells us, This is what the Lord says, Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God, who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. God may communicate with His children when they gather as a community of believers. He may also speak through the Scripture, through prayer, moral guidance, discernment, and every aspect of existence. Trusting Him and staying attentive to His voice are essential for our progress and success. How does God often communicate with us through these things? He does so by His Spirit. As in the Bible already told us that the leading of the Spirit is a sign that we are children of God. The Holy Spirit will often prompt us to act on what we've heard, seen or learned, giving us a deep sense of purpose and peace when we follow His guidance. This peace and clarity are the most reliable way to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit and know that we are following the will of God for our lives. Saints, God delights in communicating with us because He loves us and wants a conversation. Through the Holy Spirit's promptings, we can confirm that God is speaking to us through whichever channel He chooses to use urging us to align with His divine will and purpose. We are chosen by God for a special purpose, and we should communicate ourselves to uncovering that ability to discern His voice, regardless of our current circumstances. God does speak to us, but we often don't pay attention to His messages. We've been given the gift of His guidance by the Holy Spirit, working through His Word and His promptings in our hearts. 
but we may ignore them or fail to recognize them. At times, the overwhelming challenges of life or the busyness of our daily routines can distract us from God's voice. If you've ever felt that God is not paying attention to you, it may be that you haven't been paying attention to Him. His word says in James 4.8, Come near to God and He will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. We all long for tangible, clear communication with God, but it may sometimes seem elusive, like a distant fairy tale. However, God is always speaking to us, even if we don't recognize it. We might feel as though we are resigned to just waiting to see what God will do, but we must understand that God's ways are different from ours, and He values us more than we can fathom. Dear friend, to identify that God is communicating with us, we can look for three key indicators. The first is through God's Word, where He speaks to us directly, engraving specific verses in our hearts when we need them most. With His Word, God imparts His divine comfort, wisdom, and guidance directly into our hearts. In the moments when we seek solace, direction, or encouragement, God has a way of etching specific verses deep within our hearts precisely when we need them most. When life casts its shadows of uncertainty and discouragement upon us, these verses emerge as beacons of light, offering us solace and unwavering assurance. They serve as a source of comfort, providing a profound sense of God's presence and His promises. During our trials, these verses become a sheltering embrace, reminding us of His love, grace, and unfailing support. I've heard testimonies of people who received comfort and deliverance from dire situations because verses began to well up deep within their hearts and, when they rested on those words, God showed up for them. A man once showed how on a sickbed, struggling for his life, he heard the words of Psalm 118, 17, I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. He said that he began to feel a pull towards these words. No other verse in scripture came to mind. He didn't even have the strength to pray about anything else. This was the only thing he could think of like hanging on to a branch on the side of a mountain to not fall. And he said he finally opened his heart and began echoing those words again and again. The more he said what the Bible said, the more conscious he became. The more he spoke, the more strength he received. After a while, the shadow of death left him and he felt peace. A few days later, he was discharged from the hospital. The Word of God was used as an instrument, communicating God's desire to give life to him. It was like God was telling him, it's not yet time, live, don't die. You see, through God's Word, we discover a treasure trove of timeless wisdom and comfort, like an ever-flowing stream of hope in a barren land. These verses are more than mere words on a page, they are living expressions of His love and guidance specially crafted to speak directly to our hearts in our moments of need. They offer reassurance, strength, and a sense of purpose, allowing us to navigate life's challenges with unwavering faith. In times of uncertainty, these verses become our steadfast companions, grounding us in the unchanging truth of God's Word. When faced with discouragement, they serve as a lifeline breathing renewed determination and hope into our spirits, this divine communication through Scripture is a testament to the depth of God's love and His desire to speak to us intimately, guiding us through the trials and tribulations of life. Have you ever had a moment when you felt the Word of God echoing again and again in your heart, leading you to take a step that would honor God and the Holy Spirit kept tugging at your heart? This is a sign from God. He is trying to tell you something. The second indicator that God is communicating with us is through the church and fellow believers, where His guidance often reaches us through sermons or the wisdom of others. However, it's crucial for us to exercise discernment and ensure that the guidance and advice we receive harmonize with the foundational truths of God's Word, for not all well-intentioned counsel is necessarily godly counsel. Like someone once said, good intentions do not always equal right directions. Within the church, 
sermons and teachings become channels through which God's Word is explained and made relevant to our lives. Pastors and other spiritual leaders strive to communicate God's truth, providing us with insight, clarity, and a deeper understanding of His will. These sermons then resonate deeply within our hearts, addressing specific concerns or offering timely encouragement. As we listen and reflect upon these teachings, we discern God's guidance, shaping our perspectives and influencing our choices. Furthermore, the wisdom and counsel of fellow believers can also be a conduit for God's guidance in our lives. Through conversations, discussions, and the advice of trusted friends, God often speaks to us. These insights and perspectives are like pieces of a divine puzzle, helping us discern our path, resolve dilemmas, or gain a fresh perspective on life's challenges. The experiences and journeys of others, when shared in the context of a supportive and faith-based community, can serve as a source of profound inspiration and direction. Sometimes you keep feeling like you have to do something, and then almost every sermon, group discussion, or friendly interaction with other believers point in that direction too. This is a strong indicator that God is trying to communicate something to you. You need to open up to it and follow what He's saying. However, it's imperative that we exercise discernment in this process. While the church and fellow believers can be instrumental in conveying God's wisdom, not all counsel is necessarily aligned with His divine truth. The wisdom we received must be examined in the light of the scripture, as we saw in the first indicator, ensuring it adheres to the principles and values outlined in God's word. This is just like Satan quoted Psalms and asked Jesus to jump off a high place, and Jesus rebuked him. We must understand that God will never lead you against what his word says, no matter how it benefits you or others. Discernment acts as a safeguard against well-intentioned but misguided advice, helping us to distinguish between counsel that reflects God's will and counsel that deviates from it. In essence, the church and fellow believers are powerful channels through which God communicates His guidance and wisdom to us. However, it's our responsibility to approach these sources with discernment, ensuring that the counsel we receive aligns with the timeless truths of God's Word enabling us to navigate life's complexities with godly wisdom and clarity. The third indicator that God may be trying to communicate with you is when He places a burden on your heart or convicts you about something for which you have no evidence. So what does this mean? At times, we may find ourselves experiencing a profound concern or a compelling urge to intercede on behalf of someone. Even when we're unaware of the specific reason, these are moments when God's prompting beckons us to engage in prayer and faithfully follow His lead. This drives us to seek God in prayer and align with His will. When God imparts a burden of prayer, He is whispering to our hearts, inviting us to participate in His divine work. This stirring within us is a call to action, a summons to approach the Creator in prayer and a reminder that our communion with Him holds the power to bring about change and transformation. It's in these moments that we become aware of our dependence on God and our need to be in alignment with His purposes. The burden of prayer serves as a potent reminder that we are not alone in our journey, but are intricately connected to the divine tapestry of His plan. Additionally, God often ignites a conviction in us about something, a firm belief in something that transcends empirical evidence or rational understanding. It could be a sin we overlooked and from which we need to repent, or a revelation from His Word that would be instrumental in our deliverance. This unwavering certainty can serve as a compass, directing our steps towards God's intended path. It's a testament to our faith in the unseen and the unfathomable, driving us to make choices and take actions rooted in our trust in God's wisdom and guidance. This beckons us to enter a deep communion with God through prayer, repentance, and faith, reinforcing our trust in His divine wisdom. These divine stirrings encourage us to embrace our role as instrumentals of God's grace and agents of His transformative work in the world. God also communicates in ways that may be clear and audible if we attune ourselves to His presence. But we often get distracted by the world's noise making it challenging to discern His voice. 
However, God is always trying to communicate with us. He desires to share guidance and wisdom with us. We only need to listen attentively and be conscious of His voice. To truly hear God, we must strive for holiness and seek forgiveness for our sins. Sin can act as a barrier, preventing us from hearing His voice, as His Word says in Isaiah 59, 1-2. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor His ear too dull to hear, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden His face from you, so that He will not hear. When we confess and seek His mercy, we should also aim to live a life of holiness to maintain a deep connection with God. God speaks to us. He wants to communicate with us. He has something to say to us. The question is if we are listening to Him. Are we paying attention to His voice and His signs? Are we willing to obey His message and His direction? God speaks to us because He loves us and has a plan and a purpose for our lives. Let us listen to Him and follow Him. Let us seek Him and hear Him. Let us trust Him and obey Him. Now let us pray over your life. Open your heart now and receive God's grace. Dear Heavenly Father, in this sacred moment of prayer, we approach your divine presence with hearts overflowing with gratitude. We thank you for your boundless goodness and unfailing mercies that continually envelop us. It's with profound appreciation that we acknowledge your unceasing protection, abundant provisions, and vigilant preservation in our lives. We offer our praises to your holy name for all that you have done, continue to do, and will do in our journey. We are humbled and refuse to take your unending love for granted, offering our resounding thanks for your unending kindness. We recognize our human frailty and the times we have fallen short of your perfect will. We come before you with contrite hearts, pleading for your immeasurable mercies to wash over our lives. We humbly seek your forgiveness for all our transgressions, beseeching you to guide us towards a life of righteousness. We yearn to cling to you, to experience the depth of your goodness and to trust in your promises. Grant us the grace to obey your commands and to serve you faithfully, allowing us to live the rest of our lives in the fullness of you. We entrust our every need to you, dear God, recognizing that you are the ultimate source of our sustenance. Strengthen our faith and embolden us to immerse ourselves in your life-giving word, banishing all traces of doubt from our hearts. As your word promises in the book of Psalms, may our paths be adorned with pleasant outcomes and may we revel in our divine inheritance through Christ Jesus. Grant us, Lord Jesus, the courage to face each day without fear, knowing that you are by our side. May discouragement and dismay find no place in our hearts, for you are our God and our fortress. In times of need, empower us with your word and grant us the wisdom to navigate the challenges we encounter. Heavenly Father, we beseech you to uphold us with your righteous hands, transforming every area of lack in our lives into an area of abundance. We release the unnecessary burdens that hinder our closeness to you, making room for your divine presence to fill us. Instill within us unwavering trust and obedience, enabling us to fully rely on your guidance without trying to decipher the complexities of your miracles. We pray for discernment, Lord, especially against the sin of pride, as we near the culmination of life's journey. Let the victories we need manifest in our lives. Holy Spirit, we surrender ourselves to your authority, and we pray for every other authority in our lives to submit to your divine sovereignty. In accordance with Lamentations 3, we earnestly implore your boundless mercies to usher in a fresh start in our lives. May every form of disgrace and insult we've endured be eradicated. We open our hearts to you, Lord, seeking purification through the cleansing power of your precious blood. Empower us to pursue righteousness and holiness with unwavering determination. We ask for a heightened awareness of your voice to clearly hear your divine guidance. We are assured that you have heard our prayers and we offer this petition in complete faith. 
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If this video blessed you, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more blessed content. We're here to support you through prayer. Please share your prayer requests in the comments. We'd love to pray with you and join you in faith. Even if you don't receive an immediate reply, rest assured that we're lifting you up in prayer, believing in God's power to touch your life no matter where you are. May God bless you. Amen. Picture this, a small seedling pushing through the cracks of a concrete sidewalk. Against all odds, it persists, stretching its delicate leaves toward the sun. That's the kind of faith we're talking about today. The unyielding belief that with every prayer, with every whisper to the heavens, you are pushing through the concrete of doubt and despair, reaching for the light of God's promise. Have you heard of the PUSH principle? It stands for pray until something happens. It's a divine invitation to be relentless in your communication with the Almighty. Think of it as a spiritual workout. Every prayer, a rep that strengthens your connection with God. Remember, whoever is born of God is destined to overcome the world through persistent prayer of faith. The world might throw obstacles your way, but prayers like arrows of hope pierce through those challenges. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus shared a parable that encapsulates the essence of persistent prayer. Imagine a tenacious widow seeking justice from a callous judge. She refused to be ignored, refused to accept a no. Her persistence moved the judge, not out of compassion, but out of weariness. Now, if an unjust judge can be swayed by persistence, how much more will the loving creator of the universe respond to your unwavering faith? This parable teaches us that God just doesn't want to hear our prayers. He delights in our persistence. He wants us to approach Him day and night, not because He needs convincing, but because our persistence demonstrates our unshakable trust in His love and power. When Jesus asked if He would find faith on the earth upon His return, He was addressing the heart of the matter. Do we have the audacity to believe, even when circumstances seem dire? Faith is the cornerstone of breakthrough prayer. It's the bridge that spans the gap between our petitions and God's provision. Without faith, we limit our own blessings. The Bible tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Your belief in His goodness, your trust that He hears every word, ignites the miraculous. In times of distress, remember the words of Philippians 4, 6-7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Your prayers are precious gifts laden with thanksgiving and hope. Each prayer lifts you from the weight of worry and plants your feet firmly on the path of peace. Pray until something happens. Your prayers are not in vain. They're the symphony of your faith, the rhythm of your relationship with God. Doubt may knock at your door, but persistent prayer is the key that keeps doubt from entering. Just as the persistent seedling pushes through the concrete to greet the sun, your persistent prayers break through the barriers of doubt and reach the boundless light of God's grace. So keep praying, keep believing, keep pushing. Your breakthrough is on the horizon, and the Holy Spirit's message to you is crystal clear. Stop doubting. Keep praying until something happens. In our journey as believers, it's easy to underestimate the gravity of prayerlessness. Prayer isn't just a simple task, it's a powerful weapon in the spiritual battles we face. Without an active prayer life, we risk severing the vital connection we have with God Himself. Have you ever felt the urgency of prayer when life's challenges loom large? When you're seeking divine intervention or a breakthrough, the call to pray is instinctual. The intensity of your prayers during these times reflects your deep need for God's touch. Yet here's where the struggle begins. Once the storm calms, the victory is won, or the breakthrough arrives. That fervor and prayer can wane. This is a danger we must recognize and guard against. Now, let's acknowledge that there will be moments where prayer feels like second nature, flowing effortlessly, as if time itself bends to your communion with God. But then there will also be days when prayers become a battle, 
each word a struggle against distractions and weariness. It's in these moments that your commitment truly shines. Remember, prayer is both a conversation and a fight. It's a fight to kneel when your spirit is weary, to speak when your mind is cluttered, and to persist when the enemy's whispers grow loud. In those days of wrestling, be encouraged to press on. Your consistency in prayer is a direct reflection of your trust in God's power. When the enemy taunts you, reminding you of your weaknesses, push back with the words of scripture that remind you of God's strength. It's easy to doubt the impact of your prayers, especially when circumstances seem unchanging. But remember, prayer is a divine dialogue. Your direct line to the creator of the universe. Your petitions and pleas are heard, and even though the answers might not be immediate, they're never ignored. Keep in mind Romans 8, 26 to 27. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. In the vast battlefield of life, there exists an opposition that often remains unseen. It's not a battle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, authorities, and spiritual forces of darkness that pervade this world. It's a realm where doubts and uncertainties flourish, where the shadows of fear and despair try to overpower our faith. But let me tell you, my dear friends, you possess a weapon that can shatter these forces. The power of prayer guided by the Holy Spirit's message. Imagine yourself as a fearless warrior, standing firm against the schemes of the enemy. The armor you wear isn't made of steel, but of faith, righteousness, truth, salvation, and the Word of God. In this spiritual warfare, prayer is your sword, and doubt is the enemy you must overcome. Doubt creeps in like a whisper, making you question the promises of God. But let me remind you of the words spoken by Jesus himself. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Matthew 7, 7-8 These verses are a beacon of hope, a divine assurance that your prayers are heard and answered. God is not a distant figure. He's your loving Father who longs to provide for His children. So, when doubts cloud your mind, replace them with prayers. Prayers that are persistent, bold, and unrelenting. Picture a locked door before you. With each prayer, with each moment you spend seeking God's presence, you're knocking on that door. And do you know what happens when you knock persistently? The door swings open, revealing the blessings, the breakthroughs, and the answers you've been waiting for. Remember, the enemy wants you to doubt the effectiveness of your prayers. He wants you to give up once you don't see immediate results. But let me tell you, it's in the waiting, in the persistence, that your faith grows stronger. When you feel like giving up, let the message of the Holy Spirit resonate within you. Keep praying until something happens. Think about the walls of Jericho. The Israelites didn't conquer it with weapons, but with the power of obediently marching around it, led by faith and guided by God's instructions. On that seventh day, after circling the walls seven times, they let out a mighty shout and the walls came crashing down. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. Joshua 6.20 The victory came not in the first circle, nor the second, but in their unwavering persistence. Likewise, your prayers are your marches around the walls. Each prayer is a step closer to victory, a step closer to breakthrough. Don't let your doubt be the reason you stop marching. Pray with certainty that your Father hears you, that He's working even when you can't see it. Pray until the walls crumble, until the chains break, until healing comes, until restoration blooms. Doubt may try to creep in, but let me remind you that doubt is the enemy of faith. The message from the Holy Spirit is clear. Stop doubting. Keep praying until something happens. Imagine a farmer who plants seeds but doubts the harvest. His doubt hinders the growth. Similarly, our doubts can hinder the manifestation of our prayers. 
So let's trade doubt for hope, hesitation for determination. When you pray, don't just speak, listen. The Holy Spirit speaks in whispers, in gentle nudges, and in the peace that settles over your heart. God's answers may not always be immediate, but they are always purposeful. Trust the process, keep praying, and watch as the hand of God orchestrates miracles beyond your imagination. So, my friends, I encourage you today, embrace your role as a prayer warrior. Embrace the battle that comes your way, knowing that through prayer, you tap into an infinite source of power. Let your prayers be bold, your faith unshakable, and your heart open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It's fascinating how the story unfolds. Joshua engaging in the physical battle below, Moses ascending the hill with the divine staff, and the ebb and flow of victory and defeat tied to Moses' uplifted hands. As long as his hands remained raised, the Israelites prevailed, but weariness would creep in, causing his hands to falter, and in those moments, the tide of the battle would turn. Let's take a moment to draw a parallel between this ancient battle and the battles we face in our lives. Moses' ascent to the hill isn't just a physical action. It symbolizes his journey to his own prayer closet. There's a profound lesson here. Our battles are fought most effectively when we retreat to the quietude of our own sacred spaces. Just as Moses didn't engage from the front line, we shouldn't face our struggles amid the noise and clamor of the world. Instead, we find strength in solitude, in the stillness where our voices can reach the heavens unhindered. Remember, every time Moses' hands wavered, the tide shifted against the Israelites. It's a poignant reminder that our battles are won or lost in the realm of prayer. Our connection to the divine isn't just a comforting ritual. It's a lifeline that determines the course of our struggles. It's easy to become overwhelmed by our circumstances, but in those moments, we must channel Moses' perseverance. When our hands grow tired, we don't lower them. We find our errands and hers the friends, mentors, and intercessors who uplift us in prayer. Just as the Amalekites were routed before the might of God's power, our battles crumble when we rely on the strength of the Holy Spirit. Doubt may try to undermine our faith, but it's in the persistent rhythm of prayer that we find our resolve. The battles may be arduous, but through prayer, we find ourselves clothed in immeasurable strength. This is our calling, to stop doubting Keep praying and watch as the hand of the divine orchestrates miracles beyond our imagination. How do you confirm that you are in God's will and doing what He wants you to do? In this video, I will share a few things with you to help you know what God wants you to do. This message is for children of God and anyone who wants to have a relationship with God. God can use anyone to serve His purposes but He is only committed to supporting and preserving those whose hearts trust in Him. We can learn this from the story of King Asa of Judah. In 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, God told Asa, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. You have done a foolish thing, and from now on you will be at war. But what led to this moment in Asa's life? Why did God say these words to him? Asa had lived trusting God and seeking only to do those things God wanted him to do, and God was there to help him. However, when he took matters into his own hands and didn't trust God for support and direction, he opened himself up to an era of struggles. Don't forget the purpose of this video is to show you how to know what God wants you to do. So pay attention, my friend. King Asa was a ruler of Judah who had done many good things in the Lord's eyes. He had removed the idols and altars of foreign gods from his land and had commanded his people to seek the Lord their God with all their heart. He had also built up the defenses of Judah and had defeated a large army of Ethiopians who had invaded his territory. However, in the later years of his reign, he became unfaithful to the Lord. He faced a new threat from Basha, the king of Israel, who attacked Judah and fortified Ramah, a city near Jerusalem. 
Basha wanted to cut off all trade and communication between Judah and the outside world. Instead of relying on the Lord for help, Asa decided to make an alliance with Ben-Hadad, the king of Aram, an enemy of Israel. He sent Ben-Hadad silver and gold from the temple of God in the palace and asked him to break his treaty with Basha and attack him from behind. Ben-Hadad agreed and sent his troops to raid several towns in Israel. This forced Basha to stop building Ramah and retreat to his own land. Asa then took advantage of this situation and gathered all the men of Judah to carry away the stones and timber that Basha had used to fortify Ramah. He used them to strengthen his own cities of Geba and Mizpah. You could look at this situation and applaud Asa for thinking outside the box and using his enemy's ally against him. However, Asa's actions displeased God, and he sent a prophet named Hanani to rebuke him for having more faith in a human king than in the Lord. Remember that Asa took sacred treasures from God's temple as gifts to appeal to a man without considering God. The prophet Hanani reminded him of how the Lord had delivered him from a much stronger army when he relied on God. He also told them that because he had done this foolish thing, he would face wars for the rest of his life. Asa was angry with Hanani for telling him the truth. He was so enraged that he put him in prison and also oppressed some of his people. He refused to repent and seek the Lord's forgiveness for what he had done. Asa then fell ill and suffered from a disease in his feet that became very severe. Still, instead of turning to the Lord for healing, Asa turned only to human doctors. Eventually, Asa died after ruling for 41 years, and though he was buried with great honor in Jerusalem, he left behind a legacy of unfaithfulness and disobedience to the Lord. Dear Saint, a simple action of unbelief in God or a stubborn refusal to seek God's will for your life can result in a costly mistake that can affect a person for the rest of their lives. God's words through the mouth of his servant Hanani still echo to us today. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. God is always looking to strengthen and help those whose hearts are committed to him. Those whose hearts are always asking, is this what God wants? Will this honor him? Is this what he wants me to do? Am I where he wants me to be? God says that he is committed to them as they are to him. This should also tell you that when you neglect what God wants you to do, you should not expect him to show you commitment. Yes, he will love you regardless of what you do. He will receive you when you turn to him in repentance. However, just like Asa and the prodigal son, as long as you stay away, you will remain apart from the benefits of God's commitment to those who are faithful to Him. Now, as we go about our daily business, because we are often engrossed with so many things, waiting to know what God wants us to do is becoming increasingly difficult. Let's be honest. It's easier to ask and wait to know what God wants you to do when you are not under any pressure or when you have your needs met. It becomes difficult when you are under intense pressure and the options before you look like they will solve all your problems. Asa found himself in a similar situation with King Basha. Up until this moment, he sought after and did those things that God wanted. But the moment Basha attacked, Asa wouldn't take the risk of seeking what God wanted or waiting until he showed up. Asa probably thought that his plans were going to save his people. And since that was a good thing to do as king, he believed God wanted it. However, God doesn't work like that, my friend. You see, although something looks good, it does not guarantee that it will be acceptable before God. That something is nice and favorable to you or to others doesn't mean that God approves of it for you. His word says in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 through 9, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. In these verses, God is saying, you need to find out what my will for you is. You need to seek my face, my child. Leave unhealthy thinking of self-dependence alone. Turn to me and I will show you mercy. My ways are different from yours. Although your ways seem right, 
They're not always going to lead to the right places. However, my own plans and thoughts always lead to the right places. Maybe you are watching this right now and asking yourself, how do I know what God wants me to do? What do I have to do to know His will for me? Here are two key ways to know what God wants you to do. Number one, you can know what God wants you to do by waiting on Him in prayer and fasting. Dear Saints, fasting and prayer are still a thing and still they work. When you pray, you admit your dependence on God. It is not safe for you to jump into everything because you feel like it or because you can. Waiting on God in prayer is making sure that you ask Him for guidance regarding your next action. One mistake we often make is to pray during or after we have made the decision. We often say, Lord, if it isn't your will, don't let this work. But if it is your will, let me prosper. This may work in a few cases, but it isn't the best way. You should pause and wait for God's answer while you pray. And one of the best ways to do this is to pray while fasting. During fasting, you deny yourself things that normally give you pleasure and excitement. Possibly movies, video games, food, social gatherings or events. Just to become silent before God. In the silence and weakness of our flesh and minds, our spirits can connect to God and know what He wants us to know. Number two. Another way to know what God wants you to do is by spending time in His Word. One of the areas of Satan's attacks is time spent with God's Word. Because we live in a fast-paced world, we want to jump in and out of the Word like we do everything else. We want short sermons, short devotionals, short Bible readings, and so on. We want quick responses for long-term needs in our lives. However, it doesn't work like that. God wants us to be committed to seeking Him in spirit and in truth. His Word is the truth that sanctifies us. John chapter 17, verse 17 says, Sanctify them by the truth. Your Word is truth. One of the ways to know what God wants you to do in any given situation is to give yourself to His Word. Getting into the Word will do two things for you. First, it will familiarize you with God's will concerning issues of life, money, dealing with others, or dealing with your flesh and the world around you. Second, the Word of God in your heart also gives the Holy Spirit the needed tools He can use to show you God's specific will for your life. For instance, you may be dealing with a difficult colleague who is threatening you. Then you pray about it and ask God for direction. He may speak to you through a verse in the Bible like Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 through 14. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance that the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. This could be received in your heart as God telling you, I have heard you and will take care of this situation. Just hold your peace. Don't speak to this person and don't resign. Just keep showing up and being a good employee. I will handle the rest. It doesn't concern you what he will do, but through faith and grace, you know what he wants you to do. When you obey, you will see what happens next. These are two major ways to know what God wants you to do, my friend. Now, when God responds, he can reveal his will through different means. He could use the inner witness of his spirit in your heart, where you just feel positive and compelled to do something without knowing why. He could also use dreams or other revelations and even clear instructions through the mouth of someone else. God cannot be limited. When we play our parts, He is sure to play His part and give us the help that we need. Do you want to know God's will for you? Ask Him in prayer. Spend time in His Word. Get His Word into your heart. And then ask trusted and mature believers for counsel. When you trust God for direction, you will never get lost. As Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Life's journey is often met with storms that threaten to derail our faith and darken our hope. Yet nestled within these trials is the promise of a divine turnaround, a metamorphosis orchestrated by God when we lay our trust in Him. The theme of trust is a profound one. It's the golden thread that weaves through the tapestry of our relationship with God. Trust is the vessel that carries us through the tempests of life, 
into the harbors of divine grace and transformation. In the heart of adversity, it may seem as though the heavens are silent and the tapestry of our lives is unraveling. Yet there lies an eternal promise in Jeremiah 32:17, where it's proclaimed, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. This verse isn't just merely a collection of words, but a living testament of God's boundless power and His ability to transcend the laws of nature, to mend the unmendable, to restore the irreplaceable. The essence of a divine turnaround begins when we anchor our trust in God, allowing His Word to be the compass that navigates us through the thickets of despair and uncertainty. It's about delving into a narrative larger than our own, where God is the author, intricately penning down each chapter with a purpose, even when the plot seems to be veiled in mystery. In the arena of faith, trust is our shield and God's Word is our sword. Embracing the Word of God is akin to planting seeds of faith in the fertile soil of our hearts. As these seeds sprout, they burgeon into robust trees of hope, their roots delving deep into the spiritual reservoir of God's promises their branches reaching out towards the heavens, as if in a silent yet profound chorus of trust. Imagine your life as a canvas. Each stroke of adversity is but a part of a divine masterpiece that God is crafting. When we trust Him, we're handing over the brush to the master artist, allowing Him to turn the seemingly disjointed and dark strokes into a masterpiece imbued with purpose and hope. Let's delve into the reservoir of faith. Let the living waters of God's Word rejuvenate our trust and witness the divine orchestration of turnaround in our lives. As we embark on this spiritual voyage, let's be still and know that He is God and He is in the business of turning things around, molding trials into testimonies, sorrows into joy when we trust in Him. The beauty of trust is that it unveils the divine narrative where God is the central character, always ready, always able to turn things around for our good. The profound truth is, the storm isn't your ending. It's merely a passage, a passage that invites you to witness the miraculous hand of God as He calms the storm and navigates you to the shores of hope. It's in the heart of these adversities that God's promise rings true for Psalm 91, 4 reminds us, He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. It's an invitation to replace fear with faith, uncertainty with trust. Every challenge you face is an opportunity for God to manifest His unyielding love and power in your life. It's a divine dance that unfolds as you step back and allow God to lead. As Proverbs 3, 5-6 urges, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. When the world trembles beneath your feet, when the skies are overcast with despair, it's a clarion call to cast your gaze heavenward, to trust in God whose love is steadfast, whose power is unmatched, and whose wisdom is unsearchable. It's not a blind trust, but a faith rooted in the character of God, who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. As you traverse through the seasons of life, with each high and low, may your heart find solace in the absolute trust in God. The journey might be fraught with trials, yet with every step taken in faith, watch as the master of the universe meticulously turns things around. With eyes fixed on God, behold the unfolding of a divine narrative that turns ashes into beauty, despair into hope, and trials into testimonies. So, dear friends, amidst life's unforeseeable twists and turns, let's anchor our trust in God. Witness the awe-inspiring, life-transforming power of trust as God orchestrates a symphony of grace it turns your life into a testament of His unfailing love and power. Remember, in the realm of trust, God moves mightily. And in the theater of faith, the impossible.
becomes possible. Consider a mighty oak tree. It stands tall, not because it's above the adversities of weather, but because it's deeply rooted in a foundation that holds it firm, come rain or shine. Similarly, our trust in God is that deep-rooted foundation that holds us strong amidst the adversities of life. The more we trust, the stronger and deeper our roots grow into the love and faithfulness of God. Our faith can be likened to a small mustard seed, which when planted, grows into a larger tree. The Bible says in Matthew 17, 20, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. This is the potential of a trusting heart. With trust in God, we can move the mountains of fear, doubt and anxiety that often block our path. Now envision a potter at work, meticulously shaping and molding the clay at his wheel. Each spin of the wheel, each touch of his hands, transforms the lump of clay into a vessel of purpose and beauty. Our lives are like that clay, and God is the divine potter. As we trust Him, He molds our circumstances, turning trials into testimonies, fears into faith, and pain into purpose. God's Word in Romans 8.28 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. When we trust God, we align ourselves with His divine craftsmanship, allowing Him to turn around every situation for our good. Our trust is the catalyst for divine turnaround. Imagine a painter before a canvas. With every stroke of his brush, he brings color, form, and narrative to what was once a blank space. Our trust in God invites Him to paint the canvas of our lives with strokes of grace, mercy, in love, turning the blank spaces of our despair into beautiful landscapes of hope and promise. When we trust God, we unlock a peace that surpasses understanding, a joy that overflows, and a hope that is steadfast. As we lean on Him amidst the chaos, watch how He turns things around, painting our lives with the vibrant colors of His love and faithfulness leading us through paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Our trust is not in vain. It's the doorway to divine turnaround. So let's anchor our hearts in trust and watch in awe as God turns things around, leading us to calm shores and bright days ahead. The narrative of Abraham and Sarah is a testament to the power of unwavering trust. The barrenness that seemed like an endless curse was but a prelude to the miraculous birth of Isaac. The long wait was not a void. It was a sacred space where trust was nurtured, faith was reaffirmed, and patience was cultivated. Every passing moment was a step towards the divine promise that was to manifest in God's perfect timing. The poignant tale of Jabez, too, resonates with the essence of trust. His life, once synonymous with sorrow, witnessed a dawn of joy when he entrusted his cause to the divine. The prayer of Jabez, a cry from the depths of despair, reached the heavens and the response was a life reimagined, a destiny rewritten. The crucible of trust is often heated by the flames of adversity, yet it's within this crucible that our faith is purified, our hope is fortified, and our spirits are invigorated. As mentioned in 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. It's a divine invitation to lay down our burdens at His feet and to witness how intricately and beautifully He orchestrates the symphony of our life. The metaphor of John 16, 21, where the anguish of a woman in labor is juxtaposed with the joy of birth, encapsulates the essence of our trials. The pain endured is ephemeral, but the joy that follows is eternal. It's a gentle reminder that on the other side of our enduring patience lies a realm of endless joy and divine blessings. Our journey may sometimes be strewn with thorns of doubt, fear, and impatience. Yet amidst this thorny path lies the rose of God's promise, waiting to bloom in the garden of our trust. 
As Psalm 56, 8 illustrates, you keep track of all my sorrows. You've collected all my tears in your bottle. You've recorded each one in your book. Every tear shed, every prayer whispered is accounted for in the divine ledger. Our communication with God through prayers and reflections is not a monologue, but a dialogue. It's an avenue to pour out our hearts, to vocalize our fears, and to affirm our trust. This divine dialogue strengthens our resolve, clears our vision, and deepens our trust. The hardships you face, the unknown that looms, they're not dead ends, but detours orchestrated by God to lead you to your destiny. Each trial is an opportunity for trust. It's not about a blind leap into the void, but a knowing step into the light of God's love. Every situation, no matter how bleak, holds a silver lining, a divine blueprint awaiting the trust-filled eyes to discern. God's promises are not mere platitudes, but power-packed truths. They're not just to be read, but to be lived, to be anchored in. Here's a gentle nudge to dive into the scripture to make it your dwelling place. Let the Word of God be your compass, leading you through the fog of uncertainty into the clarity of God's plan. As you navigate through the daily chores, the highs and lows, embed your heart and trust, water it with the Word, and watch how God turns your barren lands into blooming gardens. In times when the world around crumbles, when every other ground sinks, remember that trusting in God is standing on solid rock. It's relinquishing control. It's allowing God to steer your boat through the storm towards the shores of His perfect will. As you step into each day, each moment, hold fast to this transcendent truth. God is in control. And when you trust Him, watch how He turns things around, manifesting His glorious plans in your life. Your situation is not the end of your story. Rather, it's the start of a wonderful testimony covered with God's faithfulness. And if you agree, then shout Amen in the comments area below. If you've gotten this far and you feel that things will continue to improve in your life, Please let us know by liking and subscribing to the channel. It's a tiny step for you, but it goes a long way. God bless you. In the voyage of life, we sometimes sail through tumultuous seas where the winds of trials and tribulations threaten to veer us off course. It's in these tempestuous times that the divine narrative often unveils itself showing us that the orchestrator of the universe has a grand design, even in our moments of despair. In those junctures, God is working behind the scenes, laying the stepping stones that will lead to a metamorphosis in our lives. Often when our prayers seem to echo in an abyss, or the heavens seem to turn to brass, we may be tempted to think that our cries go unheard. Yet, the Bible is rich with verses that remind us of God's unfailing love and His mighty power that operates even in silence. Take, for instance, Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. Now, how do we steer through these seasons of stillness where God seems silent, yet is profoundly at work? How do we interpret the signs that a divine shift is on the horizon, ready to rewrite our story? Is the realization that every chapter in our life is penned by the divine author, even when faced with adversities, James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4 nudges us to consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. The crucible moments are but a refiner's fire purifying us, molding our character to reflect the image of Christ. The divine whispers often come in the form of closed doors or unforeseen challenges. Where one door shuts, another opens. It's God's way of rerouting our path, aligning us with His grand blueprint. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5-6 through 6 reminds us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him and He will make your paths straight. 
Furthermore, the tapestry of her life is interwoven with relationships that are divinely orchestrated, encounters that spark a flame of change, nudging us closer to our destiny. God often places individuals in our path to mirror His voice, to act as vessels of change. Signs of a celestial shift may come in dreams or through a renewed sense of hope and faith, despite the prevailing circumstances. It's a gentle reminder from above that the dawn is near. As Romans chapter 8, verse 28 reassures, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. So, dear viewers, even when the world around seems chaotic, look for the divine clues. Embrace the journey with a heart of gratitude, knowing that every twist, every turn is a part of God's majestic narrative. For in the grand tapestry of life, each thread, no matter how entangled, is purposefully laid by the master weaver, setting the stage for a divine encore that will shift the narrative of our lives, manifesting His glory in ways beyond our imagination. Let's delve into the biblical narrative of Joseph, a young shepherd who traversed the path of betrayal, slavery, and imprisonment before ascending to the pinnacles of Egyptian governance. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 encapsulates the essence of divine orchestration. You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. The adversities Joseph faced weren't mere coincidences, but divine arrangements setting the stage for a monumental shift in his life and the lives of many. Similarly, when the storm clouds gather in our lives, when adversity knocks, it's often a prelude to a divine symphony about to unfold. The discomfort, the unrest, the questioning, they are not just existential crises, but often divine nudges, urging us to look beyond the visible, to tune our ears to the celestial melody that orchestrates our lives. Now, let's reflect on those moments of unsettling quiet before dawn. The so-called bad phases, they often arrive as unsolicited guests, leaving us bewildered. Yet, in that crucible of confusion, God is often forging a new narrative, a new chapter in our life story. Each challenge is a note in a divine melody, leading to a crescendo of transformation that reverberates through the essence of our being. It's crucial to anchor our understanding in the unwavering belief that God's love is constant through the ebbs and flows, through the highs and lows. His love is not a fair weather companion, but a steadfast anchor. As Romans chapter 8, verse 28 reminds us, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Each trial we undergo, each seemingly insurmountable mountain we face, is often a stepping stone, a divine step for a new dawn, a new narrative. The signs are often subtle, the whispers of change often soft. Yet as we attune our hearts and minds to the divine rhythm, we begin to discern the unfolding script of God's magnificent plan. When adversities knock on our door, it's instinctual to seek a culprit, to point fingers at ourselves, at circumstances, or even at the Creator. However, this blame game veils the profound transformation awaiting us. The struggles we face aren't for naught. They are divine signals, heralding a forthcoming metamorphosis. Our trials are but a prelude to triumph, a crucible forging our character for the blessings to come. Now, in the heat of turmoil, it might seem like a Herculean task to discern these divine signals. Yet with a heart tuned to the whispers of faith, we can perceive them. The first sign is a sense of divine discontent, a holy unrest that propels us to seek God's face more fervently. It's a tender nudge, urging us to abandon the shallow waters of complacency and to dive into the depths of divine reliance. The scripture vividly illustrates this through the narrative of Job. Despite being besieged by unimaginable calamities, Job's relentless pursuit of God's righteousness unveiled a grander blessing a divine alteration in his life story. Job chapter 42, verses 10 through 17. His unwavering faith amidst adversity became a testimony of God's transformative power. Similarly, when we face unexpected roadblocks or find ourselves in a season of waiting, it's a sign. It's God's way of saying, pause, reflect, and draw nearer. 
It's a celestial beckon to lean not on our understanding, but to trust the divine script writer who is about to turn the page to a new chapter in our lives. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. Moreover, when our hearts are laden with the weight of unfulfilled dreams, when our prayers seem to echo in a void, it's a divine interlude. It's God whispering, My child, trust my timing. The Bible reassures us that God makes everything beautiful in its time. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. Furthermore, the encounters with individuals who challenge our faith or perspectives are not mere coincidences. They are divine appointments meant to spark a flame of revelation, igniting a journey towards a higher understanding and a deeper relationship with God. Each trial, each waiting period, and every divine appointment is a meticulously orchestrated sign that God is at work, realigning our path, reshaping our desires, and redefining our destiny. So, when faced with the winds of adversity, let's not be disheartened, but be invigorated with hope, knowing that a divine narrative shift is on the horizon. Life's journey isn't a straight highway, but a winding road with a chair of ups and downs. It's akin to a riveting narrative with twists and turns, each chapter orchestrated by God to mold us into the individuals we are destined to become. When we find ourselves at a crossroad, it's crucial to reflect upon the signs God is presenting to us. Now, let's move into the biblical tale of Joseph, whose life was a testament to God's profound ability to transmute adversity into prosperity. Falsely accused and cast into the abyss of a dungeon, Joseph could have succumbed to despair. Yet, his unwavering faith was his beacon amidst the engulfing darkness. His narrative climaxed when he emerged as the Pharaoh's confidant, a remarkable twist showcasing God's magnificent plan in action. Similarly, the saga of Abraham, a paragon of patience and faith, unfolds as a comforting reassurance. His anguished wait for a progeny stretched over two and a half decades, a journey punctuated with moments of faltering faith. Yet, it was through this crucible of waiting that his faith solidified and God's promise materialized. The essence of these biblical anecdotes is a clarion call to introspection. When faced with setbacks, do we perceive them as mere roadblocks or as divinely orchestrated detours steering us towards God's grand design? Our perceptions can either entrap us in a quagmire of despair or liberate us into the realms of boundless hope and resilience. Now, envision a lush garden each flower bud veiled in a cloak of patience, awaiting the divine timing to unfurl into its full glory. Much like these buds, our lives are in a perpetual state of becoming, each challenge propelling us closer towards blossoming into the individuals God envisioned us to be. Now, suppose you've been encountering repetitive scenarios or emotions. These might be divine signposts urging a shift in perspective or action. Maybe it's a nudge towards breaking old, shackling patterns, and embracing transformative change. When the chill of isolation descends upon our lives, it's easy to misinterpret the scenario, to feel as though the world has turned a cold shoulder. However, this is far from the truth. The seeming desertion is not a verdict of rejection, but a divine setup for a deeper connection, a pulling away from the worldly crowd to create room for a heavenly crowd it's in this space of solitude that God begins to work on the canvas of our lives, painting a new picture that tells a story of His love, grace, and power. In the Bible, we see numerous instances where God set individuals apart before elevating them to their destined positions. Joseph's journey to the palace began with a pit in a prison, places of isolation, yet they were the very corridors that led to his destiny. Similarly, Moses' sojourn in the desert was a precursor to his monumental task of leading the Israelites to the Promised Land. The process of change begins with an inner transformation. Before the external circumstances of our lives can align with God's glorious plan, there needs to be a metamorphosis from within, a shedding of the old to make way for the new. 
Its transformation is akin to the process of metamorphosis a caterpillar undergoes to become a butterfly, a profound change that unveils a new dimension of existence, echoing the scriptural truth in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. The world around us may not understand this process, and its reaction could be one of opposition or misunderstanding. Yet, it's crucial to stay rooted in the awareness that this divine process is not to push us down, but to lift us up, to change not just our situations, but our stories. As our inner beings resonate with the nature of Christ, our external realities begin to mirror this divine nature, unfolding a narrative of hope, grace, and divine favor. This journey, though might be punctuated with challenges, is a beautiful unraveling of God's perfect plan for us. As we align with God's workings, staying patient and faithful, we will witness the glorious unfolding of a new chapter, a new story written by the divine author. If we are speaking to you, say a resounding amen in the comments section below.